Welcome to the Heart of Fauquier podcast. Here you'll learn the stories and tips from local business leaders and entrepreneurs who make up the heart of the community. Discover what makes Fauquier so wonderful and be inspired by the journey of local success stories. Now let's join Austin, owner of Bedrosian Cleaning Services, as we hear from today's special guest. Welcome to today's episode of The Heart of Fauquier. Today I am talking with Carmen Rivera. Um, I'm excited to get to know more about her story and about her business and everything. Uh, just to get started with things, mm -hmm. just say a little bit about who you are and the business that you own. So my name is Carmen Rivera. I am a State Farm agent here in Warrington. Um, I started with State Farm about 20 years ago with an agent out in Ashburn. I was a team member. And um, now uh, I had the opportunity um, January of 2017 to open my own office. I took over for an agent who had retired, Mr. Joe Runyon. Uh, so I'm very thankful to be here. I love Warrington. Um, it's a great family town. and. Uh, I'm a local, I'm, I'm a Virginian at heart, so it's a perfect place. Yeah, absolutely. Did you grow up here or did you come in from another area and you're just Virginia at heart now? No, I, I was born in Virginia in the old Fairfax Hospital. Okay. <laughs> so uh, my parents graduated from the old uh, Fairfax Hospital that's now, or high school that's now Paul the Sixth. Um, so uh, my children grew up here. Uh, I've got family in Fauquier, and it was just a perfect transition yeah. um, to, to open an office out here. Absolutely. Did you uh, have any career before being in insurance, or is this what you've done your whole life pretty much? Well, I, I actually I worked for my uncle. Um, he was an insurance agent when I was in high school, so I got a little bit of introduction to it. Um, I also worked for uh, the state. Um, uh, my uh, ex-husband had a bail bonding company, so I did a little bit of that as well. Okay. Um, but I came back to insurance. Uh, a friend of mine was a State Farm agent and um, uh, offered me the position, and I went through the licensing and uh, have enjoyed it tremendously ever since. Yeah, awesome. What would you say is your favorite part about doing business right now uh, as an insurance agent? I think right now, um, people's tensions are high, obviously with COVID. Um, the things that are brought to light maybe that they hadn't considered before, um, uh, concerns about you know how they can keep their household still going if they were to become sick. Um, uh, income, of course, is a huge thing. And here what we try to do is just have real conversations with our customers, um, identify areas that we can help them. We do um, uh, insurance as well as financial services. And um, we, we just try to take care of them. Right. Uh, in the very beginning, we did a lot of what we call just care calls, you know, calling our customers, checking on them. I've got a large, um, a part of my book of business is seniors and we just wanted to make sure that they were okay yeah. and I think that that's one thing that that we really take pride in because the the community as well as my customers know that we really really care and we, we're here to help so right yeah um, what would you say in the beginning when you started with insurance did you think of it as going into business for yourself and the whole entrepreneurial mindset is that what you were driven towards or was it just the industry interested you and so you wanted to pursue it well in the beginning um to be honest it, it was a job yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um the more i got into it the more you know i realized what a huge impact that you can make on people um, the, the first time that you hand over that life insurance check and you're able to take care of a family so they yeah. can continue. Um, it, it's very, very impactful. I, I tell everybody kind of jokingly, um, I always wanted to be like a doctor or nurse. And well, I passed biology with a D minus, so that oh, no. wasn't in the cards for me, let's just say that. No. Um, but this is a way that, that I can truly help someone. And um, and then as time went on, uh, my children, they're, they're 34 and 30. Okay. I've got two grandbabies now. 
And so they, um, once they graduated college and were off on their own, it was, it, for me, even though it was later in life, it was, that's when I started to get that entrepreneurial spirit. Okay. And decided, hey, you know, I can do this for myself. There's endless opportunities. And with State Farm, they are, they really, really support um, team members, you know, becoming agents. And they put you through what they call an agent aspirant program. So for me, even though it was a little bit later in life, my, my goal was to open my agency before I turned 50. Okay. But I did it two months before. Hey, so I made congrats. that goal. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So cool. So for me, I'm thinking with this industry, like you see so many insurance agencies around a town, even other state farm agencies, yeah. you know, somewhat lo uh, local and everything. Um, what do you see any challenges with it being such a popular market or is there something like special that you guys have that you aren't worried about it and so you're just you know diving in because you know you have something special here well, if that makes sense sorry that's kind of a confusing question no no um it actually it's a great question um one thing there there are other state farm agents i could probably walk to their office and they are fantastic um, the one thing that's nice about having an insurance agency, whether it's State Farm or, or another company, is you have that opportunity to make it what you want it to be. Um, the atmosphere that you want to create in your office. And I think for us, you know, I could have stayed a team member. I didn't have to open an agency. Right. But I, again, I wanted to be able to help and I wanted to be embedded in the community where I had the big national brand behind me, which is so supportive, and they want you to be in the community. Right. But to have avenues to support, you know, various nonprofits or organizations, and I think that what makes us a little bit different is that people really feel that when they come into the office. It's not just, you know, we're we're not um, just trying to sell you something. You yeah. know, we really. We really want to protect you and your family, and we care about the community, and we're very in tune with the challenges of of our particular county, um, and and become you know we we become friends with with our policyholders and and with um, different organizations that we support. Yeah, absolutely, and I can see that with you know State Farm for sure, and then even some other insurance agencies. I like how they are all locally owned, so it's not mm -hmm. some manager that they kind of import and stuff. It's someone who actually is in the community and cares and wants to serve, just like you were talking about. I think they make it pretty obvious, you know. I think it's a really good thing. Well, they, I, I'm so proud of the company. They, they've done so many things since since the pandemic started. Yeah. Um, you know, they they've given money back to the communities, and and you're right. I think that that's what makes us a little bit different. Um, they encourage you to participate in your community. If you if you have that mindset, they want you to be out there helping. Um, and that's just the difference from having a local agent versus, you know, having a, a big call center where you dial 1-800 insurance right. agent. So um, I'm very, very thankful, grateful, and blessed to be part of such a great company. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the most fun things that you've done to impact the community? So you were saying that you guys like to do things with charities or different organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the big ones that uh, you participate in or have oh, given goodness. to you? Um, so there's so, there's so many great organizations. Um, we really stand behind um, our, our school system, number one, um, the American Cancer Society we, we participate in. Uh, Relay for Life, and we were the um, first sponsor, the, the first sponsor of the first Real Men Wear Pink okay. for the month of October, um, and that's so much fun. Yeah. And we were able to raise over $28,000 with wow. the gentleman, or the gentleman that participated did, wow. um, uh, to be able to, uh, for cancer research. Um, another one that we were a little disappointed this year. We weren't able to, because of the pandemic, to have um, our motorcycle ride, but we also started the American Heroes Ride, which is to support um, our law enforcement and military veterans. Yeah. Um, but the money raised for that goes back to the Falkir Cops for Children Shop with the Cop program. And yeah, I've heard of that recently. Yeah, so, so there's some, um, uh, 
events that, that we've, you know, been founding, the founding uh, sponsors for and will continue to do, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I but think- those are probably the two most fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think this year, those are more important than ever before, you know? And so I think it's awesome that you guys are still doing that and making that impact. Um, you said something about with the motorcycles. You and uh -huh. my husband have a motorcycle, right? My husband has two. Okay. He does. Um, he is definitely a a motorcycle enthusiast. Yeah. Um, I can't say that I'm not in control. I just sit <laughs> on the back, but yeah. I love every second of it. It's Good. it's a lot of fun. And um, he he actually introduced me to motorcycles. I was always the one that I didn't even want to ride next to it oh, know, really? on the roadway. But there is just something right. that's it's just really freeing we'll go on a sunday afternoon and and just hit the road and go through the countryside and it makes you just appreciate everything um but yeah we have a lot of fun yeah and there's a lot of great places to ride around here if you want that you know joy ride just to see the fall area. here is gorgeous yeah. no matter what season it is of course we can't go in winter time due right. to the ice but spring summer fall just to watch the change of seasons around here is absolutely beautiful yeah absolutely and also your husband, is he a veteran or is he currently in the military? Is he a colonel? Is that what I saw? He or? is, yes. He's a retired lieutenant colonel of the okay. Army um, for 33 years. Wow. He uh, served um, over in Iraq and um, Afghanistan um, twice. And uh, he ded dedicated his life to, to military service. Um, I'm incredibly proud of him. He's, he's he uh, is originally, he's from Puerto Rico, came here when he was eight, and um, he's lived the American dream, and yeah. uh, just a really, really great guy. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for you know, his service, and obviously you're a big part of that as well with supporting him and everything, so thank yeah. you guys for that. That's a big deal. So, um, looking a little bit uh, back on your journey, you know, the last however many years as an agent now, mm -hmm. um, what have been some of the most difficult things that you've had to overcome? Um, Whether it's in business or personally, just because you had to grow into the role or, mm -hmm. you know, either way. Um, as far as any sort of hurdles, uh, transitioning from being a team member um, uh, to owning your own agency has its own hurdles. You think when you've done it for 17 years, oh, I know what to do as soon <laughs> as I open those doors. Um, and, and let's just say I have a new respect for agents. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it is hard, uh, but you know, I, I'm somebody who believes to embrace your burdens. There's a reason for that and be thankful for your burdens. So mm -hmm. um, it just makes you grow and, and to become stronger. Uh, it's, it, I don't think that I had anything super unusual as compared to anyone who's opening a business. Um, but it, it, you do have a new sense of responsibility. And when you own a business, whether it's an insurance agency or, or any other type of business, you're the face of that business. Yeah. So it's 24-7, you know, when, um, and, and I actually, I love it. Like, you know, if I go to the grocery store, they're like, oh, hi, Carmen, you're my agent. <laughs> or, or I saw you, you know, in the Discover magazine or something like that. And thank you for doing that. And, and it's just, it's. It's such a blessing. I mean, to be able to to be recognized in a positive way, and that's all that you know. That's all that I can ask for. I'm um, I'm so incredibly thankful that I've got a team that you know their their main priority is to take care of the customer and to hold that integrity. Yeah. And um, and they take it as a huge responsibility as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what have you done so you said the team is really important and i totally agree having mm -hmm. you know obviously we're going to see the leader and everything and sometimes they get all the praise but they always point it down to their team and i think that's huge what have you done to build uh such a great team um oh. well hopefully i hopefully they would say that you know <laughs> if they have a question that i'm that i'm here to answer it yeah my my role is I want them to get to the next level. And then they have that satisfaction. So insurance and, and like many other careers is constantly learning and it's constantly changing. Definitely. And I wanna make sure that I'm providing them with the tools um, and the knowledge to be able to have that 
that satisfaction and feel like they're growing in their career, as well as making sure that we're taking care of our customers. Um, I, I am, again, just so blessed with the team that I have, and they are, um, you know, I could walk out the door and go home and put my <laughs> head down and sleep, you know, sleep well, because I know that they're doing everything the right way. And to right. me, that's, that's the ultimate. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know you're under pressure because I think some of them can hear us while we're doing the interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, okay. say, I say this all the time. Yeah, yeah, I say this all the time to them. Yeah. And they, they I, I hope, I, Carol, <laughs> I hope that they know that I appreciate them because I do. They're yeah. wonderful people. And, and they, they represent the agency just in their day-to-day um, roles. Everybody's a little bit different and a little bit stages, you know, with their family and different stages and things like that. But they're very well respected in the community as well, just as individuals. So. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so kind of going back a little bit again, um, you said that you actually got your own agency when you were almost 50. You were not 50, 50 yet, right? 49. Right. When you're 49. <laughs> On the verge. <laughs> <laughs> right. So for anyone who is kind of, you know, in that stage of life, who's mm-hmm. looking at making a leap with business ownership, uh, maybe specifically with insurance and very similar industries, but maybe even just in general, Mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you give them? Because, you know, it's easy to, you know, I mean, they've been doing something different their whole life and then they're Mm -hmm. thinking, I'm going to make this big jump. Uh, What what advice would you give someone like that? Go for it. Just go for it. Go for it. Because um, you don't want to ever look back on your life and say, what what would have happened if I you know, had tried this. You know, yeah. you don't want to have any regrets. And so, um, and I always, when I went into it, I always thought to myself, well, what if I don't succeed? Or or what if the agency, you know, I, I can't keep the doors open or something like that. You always have to have a contingency plan. You know, don't, don't um, uh, just jump in and, and not plan for it. You know, it, it took a lot of planning. I probably started, even though the, the mm-hmm. doors opened in 17, I started in 2015 oh, yeah. on that journey to make sure I talked to, um, I talked to other agents, um, uh, not just in our area, not just in Virginia, but in other states, you know, what do you like about agency? What do you not like? And make an informed decision, but but don't have any regrets. You've got to go for it. If this is something that you feel in your heart and that, that you want to do, um, take that leap. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. I think that a lot of people are on the verge of that, and some of them make the jump and some mm-hmm. don't. Um, some kind of make the jump and then it doesn't work mm-hmm. because they didn't go all in, you know. Um, so I think that it's important to just, you know, make the jump if you feel I've heard that from... Uh, a lot of people that I've talked to and then even people with these interviews a few of them have said you know if you're thinking about it just go for it you know you only live one time and you don't want to look back with regret the Absolutely. Best, you know, the best time to do that big change is right now you know um, so yeah absolutely um, I can't remember I I think I saw on social media you guys are doing something special with Christmas at Christmas uh, we don't have anything through this time okay. any any specific things um, the one thing that we did we again we couldn't have the motorcycle ride which was really disappointing right. but we made sure to make a donation to like the fall care cops for children um, sometimes it, we love to volunteer we we love to be in the organization and helping and and with the pandemic it's limited at us a little bit um, I think for, for anyone that's looking for areas to be able, if they would like to contribute, whether it's monetarily or, or volunteer, um, you know, right now people are hurting, you know, just to be able to put food on the table. So right. we've got the Fauquier um, Community Food Bank that, that they can make donations to, and, and we helped with that. Um, uh, it, also the schools, you know, we still have problems with the schools with internet connection and being virtual and um, Chromebooks and things like that. The children, they, the teachers need help, you know, just for normal supplies and uh, any way that, that anyone can help along those lines. Those are, are really areas within the community that um, uh, need, you know, need attention. And yeah. if everybody just does a little bit 
it just, you know, take five minutes or just does a little bit. No donation, number one, is too small, even if it's a dollar, it's not too small. But if everyone does a little bit, then that makes a big impact. So yeah. those little gestures make a big impact. And, yeah. Um, that's the only thing that I would ask really for, for Christmas time this year. And of course, Toys for Tots, they're very, um, they definitely need uh, more toys um, uh, to be able to provide for the children as well. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So just to transition into the last couple questions here with mm -hmm. you, um, I like to talk to people, especially who've been around the area for a long time, about their community specifically. Mm -hmm. um, you said, you know, how beautiful you know, the areas with your uh, riding on the motorcycle and everything. Um, what would you say is your favorite part about Fauquier County specifically, or what sets it apart from other areas? Well, Fauquier is definitely an agricultural tourism um, county. Um, we're surrounded by Culpeper and Prince William who, you know, they have the, the maybe the growth with all the subdivisions and things like that. And Falkia really wants to preserve, you know, the farmland and that small town community feel. I, um, again, my children are older, but I think it's a wonderful place to raise a family. Yeah. Um, it's very community oriented. Uh, I've had the pleasure of, of meeting some great community leaders as, as well as the residents and everyone pulls together. You know, just for an example, when the pandemic started and they had the, the um, for the healthcare workers up at the hospital, they had the parade of cars and lights. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many uh, people really, really care and they step up to the plate to, to support each other. And I think that's the main thing, besides the fact that it's just absolutely beautiful out here. Yeah. Um, the, the country roads and, and the small town feel and Old Town Warrington and the, and the steps that they've taken to keep businesses open down there but uh, that community camaraderie is is like no other around. Yeah, absolutely. And I've heard that a lot. Um, I actually came into the community, like I was saying before we started the, the recording here, um, I just came in the last few years, mm -hmm. but I think you can quickly uh, feel that. Um, mm -hmm. That's how the community is. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, my wife and I wanted to stay in this area. And then with our business, we want to make sure that we are, you know, joining in on that and, you know, impacting the community positively and um, getting to know the people who are, you know, behind that. Because I think that, um, I mean, the reason that we named this podcast The Heart of Falk Here is because I think probably the biggest people that rally behind that and start it are the business owners, the small business owners mm -hmm. in the community. And so I think that's uh, super awesome that that's how the community is and that's kind of the vibe they give off and everything mm -hmm. um it didn't just happen you know people are business owners have really started that and you know they keep feeding it and obviously there's great people in the community that are business owners that also feed it but mm -hmm. um i think that's great um what are your favorite places um in warrington or anywhere in fuck here to go out to eat or just to hang out and have oh. an evening with your husband <laughs> Um, gosh, there's so many <laughs> places to eat. Um, uh, maybe for like a Saturday evening, um, Denim in Pearls is really good. Okay. Um, uh, out at the wineries, I love the, the different food trucks that they have around. Like there's El Jefe Street Eats and uh, La Chapaneca, they're out there. Um, uh, Oh gosh, Claire's at the depot. Of yeah. course, they're amazing. Um, and then just for a quick lunch, I love Sean's barbecue. Yeah. But uh, that's one thing that, that Falkier definitely has great restaurants and great variety as, as far as places to eat. But I don't, it, one, an opposite end of that, I don't think there's a bad place that you can eat yeah. in, in Falkier or Warrington. So. Oh, absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm glad that we got to meet and chat a little bit. Um, I think that people did get a lot of value. Um, and then if anyone is, you know, having insurance needs, definitely uh, give Carmen a call and see if, how they can help you out. Um, and if they ever have anything going on with like the charity stuff and the different things that you were gonna, uh, that you worked on or um, give your time to, uh, definitely get involved with that and uh, support her and what they're doing here. So, thank you thank so much, Austin. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of The Heart of Falkir. 
If you loved joining us today, give this podcast a great review and subscribe to keep up with new episodes. If you have an office in Falkir that needs a cleaning service, reach out to Bedrosian Cleaning Services and see how they can serve you. Until next time, thanks for listening.